Times.com. I'm Shelley Grad. We are live in the LA Times newsroom. Today we're talking about a LA Times investigation, <clears throat> pardon me, of um, fire response times here in the city of LA. And uh, the LA Times has crunched millions of data points to, for the first time, really examine how long it takes for the LA Fire Department to get to your house when there's an emergency. And we're here to talk about this with Times reporters Keith Lithicum and Ben Welsh. Thank you both for coming in. Thanks. Okay. Well, Kate, let's start with you. We spent months crunching these numbers to really try to understand whether geographic differences <clears throat> pardon me, make a difference when it comes to when the, how quickly the LA Fire Department gets to your house. What were the basic findings we found from our investigation? Well, we found that it really does matter where in the city you live. Um, the geographic differences were really huge, um, depending on whether you lived in um, steep hillside communities like the Palisades, Brentwood, Bel Air, or if you lived in more urban, denser, flatland neighborhoods um, like Westlake or Pico Union. Uh, we found that in those uh, hillside communities, which of course tend to be you know, among the most affluent in Los Angeles, uh, the fire department is failing um, to get to the scene of emergencies within six minutes, 85% of the time, roughly. Um, that six minute standard is uh, a, a national standard that the department has embraced and say they, uh, they try to hit. Um, so by contrast to that pretty poor per performance up in the hills, um, the department is getting to emergencies in and around downtown uh, nearly half the time uh, within that six minute time frame. So they're doing a much better job um, in in the more dense parts of the city and a much worse job up in the hills. Yeah, that's, one of the, that's really one of the most striking parts of the findings. They were very counterintuitive in the sense that they found that some of LA's most affluent residents, people live in Bel Air, Brentwood, the Hollywood Hills, Pacific Palisades, actually have significantly slower response time on average than some areas that are much more working class, poor around downtown, Koreatown, that kind of thing. And I guess, what is the reason for that? Why is, what accounts for this big gap in response times? Well, I mean, they're counterintuitive in that we come to expect that people with means get better service, but they're not counterintuitive if you just look at the topography of where rich people tend to live in LA. Um, you know, the hills are, are filled with more affluent people. Um, and the hills tend to be less sparsely populated um, and farther away from fire stations. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense uh, that, you know, a heavy ladder engine or, or fire truck is going to, you know, take a long time to climb three miles up steep winding hills to get to some of these um, patients, you know, really high in the hills of, of Bel Air, for example. Um, so I think I think topography is a big part of it, and that's what the fire department will say is, you know, we we arrange our resources, we craft our deployment plans based on where people are in the city, and uh, there are fewer people in those areas because they're more spread out, um, and they will also say that that the challenges of, of just those steep hills make it, um, you know. There's sort of a glass ceiling for how, how well they can do in those areas. Right. And one of the things I thought that was really interesting was one of our findings was that some of the longest delays occur when there's more than one call at one time. So you get some simultaneous calls. The firefighters at one station go to that call, then another call comes in. And that, that is where we actually found some of our longest delays, correct? Right. Yeah, I mean, and that is a problem that has been exasper exacerbated recently because the department has seen about a fifth of their, um, or resources at about a fifth of their stations close because of budget cuts. So like the rest of the city, you know, the fire department has seen uh, its share of budget cuts in recent years, and that means, you know, with fewer units out, you're going to have more of those so-called collisions when um, somebody is responding in one part of the you know, at one time, which means that that unit can't respond to another emergency, and uh, the dispatchers must send somebody from farther away. 
Okay. Well, Ben, let's go to you now. Ben is our one of our uh, producers and database editors and programmers here at the Times. And Ben has produced this really amazing uh, tool that basically allows us to really visualize all this data, visualize these differences in response times, and actually lets you check your own address, your own neighborhood to see how the LAFD is doing. Ben, can you walk us through the database? Yeah, sure, Shelby. So essentially, this whole process began when we acquired a copy of the dispatch database from the LAFD's own computer systems. Every time uh, a fire truck or an ambulance gets sent out on a 911 call, a record gets put in this database, and over time, there's hundreds of thousands and then millions of records in it. We acquired that database. We then mapped it out and analyzed it and wrote this story that's in the paper today, but also made an interactive map, which I'm going to call up right now on this screen. All right, and what the map basically shows is the average amount of time it takes the LAFD to reach these different uh, small grids that we've laid out over the LA city limits. So again, remember, LAFD only serves people who live within the Los Angeles city limits, which is why you see sort of the unique shape of, uh, of LA here, all colored in with uh, pinks and greens. And what the colors show is uh, areas where it's a green shade, those are where responses on average are beating the six-minute national standard. And on the pink scale, it's places that aren't. So the pinker it gets, the slower it is, right? And so uh, something you'll notice probably right away is that there's a large uh, pink shading here right across the where the Hollywood Hills are and the Hollywood sign and, and uh, straight from the Palisades to Griffith Park. And that's exactly the phenomenon that Kate was talking about. And um, we were mentioning it's faster downtown, so if I go here and punch in the LA Times address, 202, West uh, First Street, and we jump in, it's going to zoom down into the LA Times address where I can mouse over and see that uh, the average response here in and around downtown is about six to six and a half minutes, right? And there's some green areas mixed in, and you won't be surprised to learn that if I turn on another layer that shows LAFD fire stations, those green areas tend to coincide with where the fire stations are. So the closer you are to a fire station, the faster the service. Not that surprising, but definitely true. Very interesting. Ben, and can you uh, focus in a little bit on a neighborhood that, for example, might have a slow response time? Sure. So, for instance, if I zoom out uh, once from downtown on the map and then again, we can see the dark pink areas here in the hills that Kate had talked about. Uh, one, one family that she interviewed as part of the reporting for the story lives here east of the 405 in Bel Air, uh, up by Stone Canyon Reservoir. And you can see these deep, dark uh, purple shades in that area. And as I hover, the, uh, the, the, the map will update to show that the average response times there are 12, 13, 14 minutes. And this particular family she interviewed has had to call 911 five times, and in each of those five times, the wait has been more than 13 minutes. So that's pretty much what people can expect up there. But it's not just the hills either, Shelby. In a previous story, we reported uh, uh, problems that LAFD has in responding to incidents around the city's borders. So, for instance, south of between the South LA and the harbor, there's a very thin strip of the city known as the Harbor Gateway that was part of the initial annexation of the harbor by the city. And because LAFD rarely calls in uh, help from surrounding fire departments uh, for calls in those areas, the times there are very slow too. So if you look at the map for yourself, you'll see the, the pink we've talked about in the hills, but you'll also see a lot of pink ringing the edge of the city borders. That's fascinating. Now, Ben, um, one of the things that's so great about your database is that it, it doesn't just do all emergencies. You break down what is considered you know, by many to be the most serious emergency when you're cardiac arrest and time is of the essence to you to get to be treated by medical personnel. Can you kind of walk through that part of the map that shows how they do with cardiac arrests? Sure. Cardiac arrests only account for maybe 1 to 2 percent of all uh, medical 911 calls, but they're among the most severe. That's when your heart totally stops beating and there's no oxygen going to your brain. And if you don't get CPR or uh, shocked by a defibrillator very quickly, you don't have much chance of, of moving. And the LAFD has uh, systems in place which they're trying to improve to, to send rescuers even more quickly in those cases. And so when I flip the map to filter down to just cardiac arrest response times, you can see it's a lot more green. Uh, it's just the true fact that uh, LAFD does better in moving people out in those cases. Now, there's still a lot of pink, too, and, and it's, it doesn't get much less pink up there in the hills. Okay. Well, Kate, let's go back to you again. What has been the LAFD's and the City Hall's response to these findings? Now, the, the, the department's been under a lot of scrutiny the last few months. How are they responding to uh, these findings? 
Well, I mean, they say they're sort of hamstrung by the realities of the topography and also, you know, small budgets. Um, you know, the fire chief has said previously that in order to meet that um, six-minute standard that they try to meet across the city, they'd have to build fire stations, you know, a hundred more nearly 100 new fire stations, nearly double their staff. Um, at one point, you know, in our conversations with fire officials, they said, you know, we'd have to put a fire station on every block, um, which is clearly a pretty, um, is not going to happen. So, um, you know, they have talked about um, sort of innovative ways to reach people in hills. Um, more quickly. One thing that they're experimenting with right now is a, uh, a motorcycle team. Um, so you put firefighters, paramedics on motorcycles, they can scoot up, you know, to emergencies much, much faster um, and start delivering um, medical aid more quickly to patients who need it. The problem with that is, you know, a guy on a motorcycle is limited by um, what you what he can carry so he might not have all the medical supplies he needs and then he can't actually transport um, patients to hospitals if that's what's needed. So, um, you know, I think the department, so far the reaction has been um, a, fair, a fair amount of resignation um, to the fact that uh, the facts of topography and funding and saying uh, they will continue to kind of do the best with what they've got. And one thing I think is important to note, as we have reported in many times in our stories, is that the LAFD has seen some fairly significant budget cuts the last few years as the city's uh, been in this budget crisis. Um, and how much is that to blame for some of these uh, times and other stories we've been reporting? I mean, that's a good question. I, we have seen with the department um, a sort of a failure over decades, it seems, to really understand um, exactly what their performance is in terms of response times. Um, over the last several months, they've sort of acknowledged that they don't have a good grasp um, from a data perspective of, of exactly how quickly uh, they're getting to emergencies across the city. Um, so the focus so far has really been on kind of uh, determining an accurate response time number and an average across the city. That's what they've been focused on um, and less on what the impact of these cuts has been. But you ask Fire Chief Brian Cummings and he will say, uh, yeah, you give us less, um, we're going to we're gonna do less. And so you have seen response times um, go up slightly and the controller's report found this as well, um, that with these closures at a fifth of the city stations, uh, response times are increasing. Okay. Well, um, Kate, my last question for you is is this. Um, one of the things that uh, people have been saying as they, if they've been uh, looking at these uh, numbers today has been, uh, you know, questioning whether um, there's more the fire department could do in terms of, you know, relocating fire stations, that kind of thing, or, or as, as you noted, adding more stations. It sounds like, though, that given the city's financial climate, we don't expect there to be, like, a huge infusion of money to the fire department anytime soon. Well, I mean, several city council members have said that that's actually a priority for them um, as new revenue um, comes into the city. Now, there isn't um, currently a whole lot of new revenue coming into the city, but there's a, a tax increase um, proposal that will be um, on the ballot next spring that would generate more than $200 million um, if voters agree to it. It's a half cent sales tax increase. and. Several council members, Eric Garcetti, who's running for mayor, um, and some others have all kind of pledged to make the fire department a priority for new funding. So um, that's been the commitment, you know, since last year's um, budget cycle when uh, the fire department was sort of in the middle of all the scrutiny over their response times and, and how the budget cuts had affected service. Okay. Well, Kate, thank you so much for coming in. And Ben, before we leave, why don't you tell people the uh, way to get to this database so they can check out their own address? Yeah. You can come to our website and look up uh, response times where you live in L.A. by visiting latimes.com slash L-A-F-D map. latimes.com slash L-A-F-D map. Okay. Well, Ben and Kate, thank you for joining us. Thanks. Okay. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.